Hello friends and welcome to a video on case studies, I guess, of Lane Equilibrium case studies. This screen is from the Pulling Series 102 video that came out recently. This is to give you a reminder of what we're going to be looking for because I got some games from the community and we are going to judge them. So I guess this is like the lab portion. This is like 103, lab class for 102. We're going to look at real games, real examples, and I'm going to walk you through what I see to be able to predict how lane equilibrium is going to look in the next 30 seconds, one minute. And then from there, we can judge, should we pull, should we not pull, things like that. So working examples, let's get into it. First game we're gonna look at is a Guardian Crystal Maiden game. Uh, looks like some level one antics were going on. So unfortunately, Crystal Maiden died, not too worried. All right, first, first thing you guys should always look for this is the very first creep wave, wave one and wave one. If enemy, the off lane, wave one, walks under tower, almost guaranteed the lane's gonna push. No jungle camps are spawned yet, so do what you can, play the lane, try to get some denies. But it almost always means there is an opportunity to pull when the camp spawns at around at one minute, not around. So I usually try to do a pull at 117. As soon as the creeps walk in her tower. I kind of know this is something I have to do. And if I see this, and I suspect they may have placed a sentry or a ward to block this, I might, if I have a sentry, I might go preemptively put it. Even though I don't know it's blocked, I know I need to pull it. Like, I need to pull. This is going to push. Depending on the lane, Spectre, weak laner, I don't want her to have to lane out here. So I need to pull, and I need to guarantee it. Even if they don't have this blocked, it's worth putting the sentry to make sure I'm going to have a pull. So let's watch. Okay, I, I will say, I'm telling you guys it should push, but we are at Guardian, and there's a good chance the enemy may just kill these creeps off. So that's always a possibility, and the lower in the ranks you go, it is more likely the enemies may not capitalize on your equilibrium. Um, I don't know. When, I don't want to say this is a mistake. It's not even... Crystal Maiden wasn't even here. So just like on the lane equilibrium. Like, they should let this push in, but you'll notice they're kind of aggroing the creeps all around. So actually... It ended up being balanced. These guys kept attacking the Spectre and forced the Radiant Creeps to run around, not attacking the Dire Creeps. And so the Dire Creeps got off free damage. And now the lane's kind of balanced again. Tower is still hitting one of the Creeps, though. So this should push eventually, except we have like a third hero here. I, <laughs> what's happening? Um, I don't know. We're still balancing around here, actually. I think that is a mistake on the Dire. It, they should have just let it pushed up. But you see, yeah, look what they're doing. They keep aggroing the Radiant Creep. So this is not something I fully covered in the video. But if the enemy just keeps doing this, it solves your equilibrium problem for you. The higher level you go, the less likely this will happen for you. All right, so I skipped forward a little bit. And this is a good example of some weird equilibrium. So let's try to predict what's going to go on here. So this is wave five, I believe. They've kind of done the same thing, kept killing the creeps around here, so Equilibrium stayed here. And now, Dazzle's trying to play aggressive, but he's actually aggroed this creep wave. That means Dire Wave 5 has nothing to fight with, and they're going to run under the tower. Something tells me this was not intentional by the Dazzle, but this can be a play that the offlane does. What this means is that Spectre has two choices. She could just farm the creep wave here, but... This means wave 5 dies for the Dire, but Radiant wave 5 is still alive. And that means in the... Here, let's play 4 seconds here. Alright, so wave 6 for both sides just spawned. And what's going to happen is that wave 5 is dead for the Dire, so only wave 6 exists. But on the Radiant, wave 5 and wave 6 exists. And that means there are 8 Radiant creeps to the 4 Dire creeps. Guys, amount of creeps, which way is that going to go? It's going to go towards the, the Dire. Equilibrium is going to push this way. So something Spectre or the supports can do is keep the lane out here and just balance Wave 5 until Wave 6 gets here. Wave 5 will fight Wave 6. This guy is pulling this creep, like over here, runs him in circles. Radiant Wave 5 fights Dire Wave 6. So the order is getting like thrown off but at the end of the day you still have four creeps fighting four creeps on both sides so you can you could also instead of holding them out here for the the radiant she can also run them around if she feels safe to do as crystal maiden 
once you see this happen, you know it's not the scenario I just explained. It's going to be the first one, where there are eight creeps on the Radiant side and four creeps of the Dire. So we have to think about pulling or interrupting this one. If we can get him to walk under the tower, then it's kind of okay. Or if you, like, aggro one of these creeps to then do a pseudo-pull and draw these creeps to the jungle creeps, that kind of works too, because then if the hard camp kills off wave 5, then just wave 6 and wave 6 fight each other after that. So actually he did it by accident, and now this is kind of going to work out. So dire wave 5 is dying under the tower here. He's coming to hit these creeps. This is not... Actually, this is pretty good for you. Uh, except for the fact that uh, the dire is getting this hard camp XP. Um, because Spectre just got a full wave guaranteed. She wasn't contested like she was before. So all you had to do on Crystal Maiden, uh, once you see that your creeps, because you have vision of them, once these creeps start fighting these guys, peek your head out here, around here. You don't have to go too far. You just have to stay near here, because then you'll get the experience from the hard camp, and you can even try to steal the last hit with your spell. And then this is totally fine for you. You can even move up a little bit more if you want to give solo XP to the Spectre, but if you're really scared because there were three heroes down here and you're not fully sure where they are, then it's totally okay to stand here because your team is getting the full wave here and you are getting some of this XP here. Um, and they're getting the full XP. So technically, everyone's getting all the XP, which is not usually like uh, the most perfect ideal plan. But in terms of lane equilibrium, things are going to work out here because, hey, look at that. Uh, you're actually body blocking. This is going to... All right, so I take back what I said. This is now going to push. Um this wave six should have just fought wave six out here and you would be good you didn't need to body block this at all um but now this will push so now you need to think about doing the pull the radiant creep is at least hitting the dire heroes instead of the ranged creep here but because it came under the tower we see we have a decent wave building up never mind bat rider just gonna kill it off for you nice guy so here's wave seven here's wave seven balanced out here uh, actually <laughs> you haven't had to do you can still try to do pulls so i haven't quite got into it but sneak peek if you can do pulls that don't destroy equilibrium such as half pulls then with the lane always balancing here it's fine so half pulls in this game would be really good not full pulls though actually maybe those would be fine too because they seem to just kill all the creeps you guys push forward anyways so in terms of lane equilibrium you would just keep it here the whole time all right, I think we're finally going to push a little bit uh, because, uh, where are they? Here they are. We now have two creeps died off, but look, they injured this guy a lot, so he could die off pretty quickly, and now you have two range creeps. That's what's most important, and this melee creep's going to get here in time so that these melee creeps do not target this range creep. So now we have this. We have two range creeps fighting and only one range creep on the dire. This is really good. Well, if you want to push, this is really good for the radiant. For the Dire, if you want it to push into him, this is good because there are two Radiant Creeps. So watch. This will go in. And you, I can see, are already preparing to do the right thing. You're getting ready to do a pull. No, Spectre, what are you doing there, buddy? Uh, I think you hit it a little too soon. What happened there? Oops, walked in a little too soon. Yeah. Um, this is cutting it close. I'm debating if you could walk out and then come back and re-aggro. It would cut it really close. So you're, you're healthy enough. I, I think you made the right call to wait here for a few seconds and just tank the damage. It's unfortunate, but it's it's all right. Um, this is a little too long, though. You could pull, pull it out sooner. Unless you're trying to do a half pull. Oh, no! All right, so what you should just do here... You can even go a few seconds before this. Just walk it out this way. And then these creeps will aggro. I I didn't explain this yet. This is in the next video. But there are some creep aggro rules. And that's why this pull didn't go off, if you're confused. Um, I, I don't want to explain it here because it's, it's kind of complicated. So it is going to be in the next topic. Um, but I think this would have been a good pull. Uh, either half the wave or the full wave. Because you see, if you did the full wave, this is kind of... This will live not long enough. Look, your melee creeps are dying. Uh, these creeps are going to kill them off, and then they're going to push under here. This creep wave will not die to this camp on its own, which means you'll have one or two creeps who survive here join the next creep wave when it's about to spawn here. All these creeps will die under tower, 
and then it'll be like uh, six creeps versus four creeps, and you're going to push again. So this could have been a good half pull. I, you kind of could have gotten away with a full pull, though, this game, just because these guys keep just de-pushing every wave. I think we'll stop there. Let's move on to the next example. Next game, we're going to look at a Guardian game again, but it's a Tusk position four. So we're kind of looking at the other side of it. All right. So right now, the first thing I'm noticing... So both sides body blocked. The creeps met in a normal place. But then due to some creep aggroing, look, this range creep is dying first. So this is actually pretty good for the, the radiant offlane here. What's going to happen is that this range creep is going to die. And the range creep contributes a good amount of damage. So then the rest of these creeps shouldn't do too much damage on their own. I, they'll do an okay amount. But because this range creep is still alive, ultimately this will end up pushing. So right now, as long as both sides don't screw up equilibrium too much uh tusk can be thinking okay in the next like 30 seconds the lane will like make its way over here how could the radiant or how could the dire fix it by doing some kind of pull so blocking a camp uh in the next 20 seconds could be really good in fact if axe really wants to make this easier he should help deny this range creep one is just good to deny yeah, it looks like he is going for it but even sooner, even if the enemy does get the last hit, because the range creep dies even faster... Uh-oh. Hmm. Because the range creep dies even faster, it has an even stronger effect uh, on what we talked about. Uh, so actually, he just aggroed one of these creeps away. This might still work out, um, but I think it'll be less so. So actually, this lane's going to stay here, roughly, because two melee creeps here are kind of healthy. And you just lost a damage source. Um, but the next creep wave is almost here. So as long as this range creep does not get touched by these guys, this should work out where it'll be a delayed effect. But there should be two dire range creeps. And that will ultimately push again. Um, especially because Axe is going to delay his next creep wave with this one melee creep. But I actually don't think he had to. I kind of think he could have just left it here. Okay, you have two different effects. I think if he just left the creeps here, then this will push harder a little sooner. Um, but it will stay here for a bit longer because the next creep waves will also meet in this area. But it'll die off and then it'll push and it'll have a sizable wave this way. I think what's going to happen now is that it'll push sooner to this direction, but it won't be as noticeable. So let's find out. And it looks like Tusk is going to go body block. I think that's good. So this creep is dying first without doing too much damage because he he's by himself and he's being focused by four. So we'll notice a mostly healthy melee creep did <laughs> very little damage to this guy, um, about 100. Over here, these two guys are signed, still alive. Um, and yeah, the range creeps are both alive. So this will now push, um, but it is staying up here for a little longer. Tusk ended up blocking these camps, okay. You guys don't have to do too much right now. So I wouldn't look to fight or anything. So like this right here, I wouldn't do this. I would stay back here because equilibrium is in your favor. And now when you run up here, you're actually drawing the aggro of these two creeps. Plus the the two heroes can now focus you. This is kind of a bad position. If you guys fight here, you have four dire creeps, one radiant creep. You actually just you actually just want to wait back here. You just want this to play out normally. Okay, you are going to back off. Okay, you're going to be fine. Yeah, I wouldn't even walk up, but I, I am glad you turned away. Um, so now we see this is actually the Radiant Wave 3, and this is the Dire Wave 3 getting here now. So now we have three ranged creeps built up. Again, be a little careful of fighting right now. What would be really bad right now is if you guys died. Because their wave is pushing so heavily like this, it does mean you guys are lower level. So actually, we can see they're both level 2, you guys are both level 1. Trading right now would be a really bad idea because you're going to lose those trades. As long as you live, you'll get the last hits and gold under the tower. But what if you died? What if both of you died? What if they can chase you under tower and zone you away? It means all of this experience that we were saying, oh, this is good. It's pushing into you. If you guys die and miss all of that, you're hugely behind now. It's like incredibly behind if you were to die right here. So trading right now is not ideal. If you can, like, poke a little bit because you're a ranged hero, that's okay. But risking your life right now is very dangerous. 
And this is actually now going to come under tower. And I think you you would have preferred for this to stay like right outside your tower. Because if you kept it right outside your tower and then just stop this pull, you've already blocked this camp. It means it's going to balance here for a really long time unless you guys screw something up. Because you already, look, you already have enough creeps here. If this one was like, if this one hadn't chased you around, um, you have enough creeps here to kill off this wave. Which means this is like an entire extra wave coming in with nothing to balance. And so you guys can then like kill a couple off here as like Axe runs it around. Maybe you guys have to come under tower if they chase you. Um, and that would be kind of okay. Because as long as this creep wave dies, this creep wave can die under tower. And this creep wave will die to all these creeps. Although you guys are kind of like aggroing the creeps around a little bit. It's getting a little weird. Now they're under tower a little bit. Uh, this should still be okay for you. Actually, maybe there's even a little bit more controllable. So this is, uh, this is the third wave. This is Radiant Wave 3 fighting Dire Wave 3 right now. Or maybe Wave 4. Sorry, Wave 4, I think. Um, and then the fifth wave is coming up right now. The fifth wave that spawned at... 0, 30, 1, 1, 30. Yeah, okay, fifth wave. <laughs> this is the fifth wave coming up. This is the fifth wave coming up. Um, so if you guys just hold these creeps here, this is the fourth wave. This would be really good. Okay, I don't know if it was intentional. I wouldn't... Uh, don't risk your life too much. Just try to keep the wave out here a bit. Okay, this is still okay. Because this is our radiant fifth wave. Now meeting the dire fifth wave. So I think if you had kept them out here a little longer... You could have kept the wave a bit more in this direction, which would have been really nice for you guys. Um, but this is still a decent spot for you guys. Okay, so you go on the Crystal Maiden here, which I think is pretty good. as a good opportunity. What it does mean, though, is that it affected lane equilibrium. So we have all the melee creeps, three on three. That's fine. But you have two range creeps. So this will push. Um... So one thing you could do, I don't even know if you'll have to hit these creeps at all, but maybe you hit them a little bit because this could be a chance to pull this creep wave at um, at the right time, pull this hard camp into this creep wave. You push this wave in. So this is why I think Axe should attack these creeps a little bit because if these creeps die, um, not, not yet, you want these waves to get a little closer. So actually, let's just play it out and then I'll show when. And maybe you won't even have to do anything. So... You don't want to run out and face, like, this is, a uh, risky. You are, uh, you're taking a lot of damage you don't need to right now. And if you have to leave, Axe can't push the wave and do a pull. Um, maybe. It depends on the timing. But it's easier to execute this kind of stuff when both heroes are alive. So I'd be a little careful of harassing him here. It's around now that Axe should just start attacking these creeps. Um, but now Axe actually has to help you, so it's kind of bad that you ran up like this. Um, because if you push this wave so that your Radiant Creeps fight this wave, like, over here, or even under tower, it's okay. Although, this will die a little too quickly under tower, so maybe you want it to, like, balance here. Um, which would be around the time you need to start attacking these creeps now. And then, I God, I don't even know what wave we're on. Um, seven, I think. I think this is wave seven. You pull your wave seven into the hard camp. Wave 7 here fights your, like, I don't know, this is like waves 5 and 6. And they, like, fight out here. Wave 7 kind of, like, dies a bit here. And then you balance the the wave 7, which will kill these guys, out here. And that means they'll meet wave 8. And then the next wave 8 will eventually rejoin here as well. And then you keep equilibrium over here. But this is kind of getting a little messy because you had to do all this. I guess it's working. Okay, Gyro decides to come fight you guys now, so actually this is kind of working out. Um, all right, well, kind of the same deal, just like another uh, 30 seconds later now. You still have three range creeps, so this will once again push kind of heavily, and that means uh, you're a Tuscan Axe, so technically the option to dive is available to you, but it is a little scary against the Crystal Maiden Gyro, in my opinion. So... When the offlane is pushing, though, it is a chance to do these kind of hard camp pulls. So let's see how this plays out. Your creeps are a little weak, so if... Uh, well, Axe is aggroing the creeps. That'll help push. All right. So these three radiant creeps can actually... They'll die, 
but they'll do a decent amount of damage before they die to these creeps unless these heroes do something about it. So this could still be an okay time to do this pull. Um, but you're not here because you, you almost died. Even though you got the gyro kill, you haven't made it back to Fountain to teleport yet. Uh, so let's see what happens. Oh, the Raiding Creeps actually got distracted by the rockets a little bit. Mm. Okay. This is another chance to pull. Oh, it looks like Axe. Axe might be going for this. I think this could be good. Yeah, so what's going to happen? This is wave whatever. Um, one, two, three. I don't know. Let's just say it's wave 10, okay? Uh, this is wave 10, but this is actually wave 11. So if wave 10 distracts wave 11 under here for a little bit and damages, maybe kills one or two creeps, and then he pulls wave 11. This is wave 11 under this, uh, this camp. This camp will die mostly, like one or two creeps. Um, and it could be good or bad. This is like a a variable play. Because wave 11 here will eventually push up. And that means Axe needs to come meet them. Otherwise, the, the lane's getting a little messy. Um, and that gives the Radiant a chance to come contest this pull. And then get the XP from this camp. Which could be bad because you're not here yet. And it looks like you went mid. So he pulls them. Here's wave 10 fighting wave 11. Turns out they didn't even kill a creep. Here's your wave 11. It's going to get chased away. All right. This could still... Equilibrium will work out in Axe's favor, but the Radiant is going to get this hard camp golden experience. So depending how you want to interpret it, could be good or bad either way. Obviously, the ideal is that you win in golden experience and lane equilibrium. So in this case, it's a trade-off and you have to decide what you want. Um, but because wave 11 is going to fight wave 12 under the tower here, I'll just show it actually. So wave 11 going to fight under the, the tower. So wave 11 definitely going to die here. But this is stalling the timing of these creeps long enough that this is the respective dire wave 12. And it's actually going to meet like out here if I had to guess. Maybe a little further up. Um, but see how this guy's like almost dead? Or not almost, but like below half. So he'll die off a little sooner. Perfect. And now it's 4v3. So this guy will die, but this guy's almost dead in the meantime. And this will end up pushing back. Uh, people are running around for the creeps, but yeah, whatever. So this will end up pushing into... This kind of counterbalances it. So we've said in the past, when the lane is out here, this is the natural equilibrium. So it wants to push this way a bit. But because there are a few extra creeps here, they're going to kill this range creep and then kind of hurt these guys a little bit which stalls out long enough for these guys to get here and then balance here again. Uh, so this will stay for a little longer. I think this is a good place to stop, uh, the five minutes. So the four position, to wrap this one up, four position, slightly less opportunities to pull because you only have one camp to pull, and the four position has to think more about just stopping the enemy from pulling. And so I think you did a great job blocking this camp with the ward. Crystal Maiden never thought to go check it. And you only need to be worried about them like doing this kind of pull but this is much easier to stop, right? If the lane's balancing out here, like half the time you're gonna be standing here anyway. So it's like very easy to see them attempt to pull and you just stop it. Okay, Legend, Legend Phoenix 5 game now. What does this mean, guys? It means we're gonna push. This is the very first wave, it's under tower. You have two options. This is a, this is a video about pulling, so the option I need to highlight and emphasize is that you'll probably need to pull in order to fix this equilibrium. Now, in this case, you actually have a an Ursa. So, arguably, you could try to do something we talked about in the last example, which is where you get the level advantage, you have the creep advantage because you're pushing, and you try to go for a kill, and then the creeps go and die under tower, and the enemy misses a whole ton of experience. So that is another option. Let's see what happens. Surprise, surprise. Equilibrium pushed because the tower was helping out. So we're going to go meet around here so this is wave one fighting wave two and you'll notice this is like it's three to four but like it'll still hold out here for a while and that gives time for the next creep wave to make it here so i think it's a bit of a mistake from tusk not blocking this small camp because it is something you should look to do although he is staying in the area he's leaving all right great work half pull i think that's great um 
you could, if you wanted to, you could get away with a full pull here. Um, and I can tell because, look at this. You have four creeps fighting four creeps, which means what? It means it's pretty much going to stay here. And even if it pushes eventually, like these creeps are a little healthier, it'll push a bit. It's going to stay here long enough that your whole creep wave could come here, kill this small camp, and then come back to lane and then meet outside the tower. That's how long you have for these creeps. And in fact, it'll probably even last longer there than that. Like your creeps will probably meet like out here if you did it. But I think the half pull works too because it gives you the option to stack and everything like that. So I think this is fine. You're killing off two creeps. Hopefully the enemy doesn't uh, get too much XP. Yeah, it looks like Tusk. Uh, yeah, you're kind of keeping Tusk distracted. I think your creeps will die off on their own. Uh, missing the second part of it though, which is doing the stack. So that's kind of part of why you do the half pull the first time instead of the full pull is to be able to make use of a stacked camp later. So I think you got distracted a bit by this tusk a little bit. And in fact, mm, well, actually, never mind. Let's leave it at that. I, you do want to stack this camp. Um, but you'll notice equilibrium will now work out a little bit because she kind of pulled the creeps under tower. I think that's a bit of a mistake on her part because otherwise this would have stayed up here a little longer. But now it should push in a bit more. Um, yeah. Yeah, so now here we are. If she hadn't pulled it under tower, it could have stayed up there a lot longer. What are you doing? Oh, I didn't show you guys. Okay, okay. Let's go back. So why is this pushing in? Because she got distracted. She distracted some creeps. And then, like we said, the reinforcements meet sooner. So here's the next wave of reinforcements. Where's the range creep? The range creep actually got distracted by the ward for a little bit. That's actually pretty good for you for equilibrium. That's not something you can do every game. Uh, but this is this does, it delays the timing of this range creep. So even if these guys were to meet a full wave um, or a regular wave, like uh, four creeps, then it would stay here in your favor because these creeps take normal amounts of damage, but you're dealing less damage because the range creep is so delayed. Um, but anyways, because the equilibrium was here, the reinforcements meet first, and so it will push. So actually, Tusk is trying to do what he can, which is to pull some of them over. And this is one thing you need to try to stop, though you're a little bit out of position for it. And one thing you can do to stop it, even if you can't stop the creeps going in, you just like draw aggro from the creeps. So you stand here, aggro this guy, walk down. After about two seconds, start attacking these creeps if these guys are still here. If they've gone already, then it's fine. Uh, so this is when lane equilibrium gets real messy, right? So you got like some guys over here, some guys over here. Uh, they're killing the range creeps first and then they're going to like convene over here. Getting real messy. I would say stack this. So let's keep an eye. Just play this out and stack this. Because with this hard camp here like this, this won't move for, for a while. Um... There are so many creeps that even though there's like a hard cam involved, it's just going to take a while for them all to kill each other. So you would have time to like come over to stack a bit. Looks like Tusk came in, so you ended up having to fight it out. This would be the stack time. So if that fight hadn't gone on, notice how you still have creeps from the original waves alive. And the next reinforcements are getting here, which means equilibrium continues to stay in this area. When you have like a like part of the half pull here, part of the, the wave here, and there's like so many, like it's not like one and one creep, right? That was like five creeps and four creeps. It's going to stay here so long that you do have time to like stack this and then pull again. Because this equilibrium is not too bad for the safe lane usually. Um, it's usually when you like come out here that it starts being bad for the safe lane. Around here is still acceptable. So if I were you, I'd want to like stand over here, try to help get some last hits, and kind of let them know like, hey, I want to stack this at 253. So try not to let what just happened happen, where you start a fight. Or I don't, I don't know who started it, but a fight started. Which if you guys started it, don't do that. And if you see them trying to start one, you just like play a little more passive, because if you successfully stack this camp. Even though you trade like even here, you're both here for experience, all of that, you will be able to deny a lot of creeps with the stacked camp. And that'll get you ahead 
later on. As long as you're here, though, at least your team is getting some of the XP and stuff. You are missing some last hits, though, because Earth is gone, which is not great. This hard camp stack, we have to be aware of that. You now need to be very careful of him pulling waves because a stacked hard camp will kill them off really quickly. As a result of not having stacked this earlier, you're trying to do another half pull. Um, but imagine you could just deny that whole wave. Right? If you had stacked this and you were able to deny this whole wave, this is wave, what, seven, eight? Let's say it's wave eight. Um, wave eight dies to a stacked small camp. And then all of these guys get to come in. This is also wave eight. They get to come in, die under tower. And then your lane is perfectly balanced. Wave nines will meet here because your wave eight died there. Wave eight dire dies here. Uh, but because you have to like do a half pull, it's going to like stay further out here a little bit and get a little, get a little weird. Make sure it's a uh, dead is something you might want to do. Cause God, what if one creep survived? Like they killed off you, you know, it's dead. Cause this guy came out, but sometimes you gotta like double check. If you only had like a single injured creep here, you can't do any kind of pulling at all. I respect it. Try and do the hard camp pull. Um, but yeah, because the, the dire creeps are here, they are going to not get pulled. For those of you wondering, by the way, real quick. So this might look better. So I said like, oh, wave nines could meet here and that's four and four. But now it's like, oh, well, actually the dire has a lot of extra creeps and they're pushing in, right? So that's easier to balance. Yes, equilibrium wise, this is technically a better scenario. But the scenario I explained where you have a stacked small camp, ooh, kobolds, where you have a stacked small camp and you're denying creeps, that is better in terms of gold and experience, which if you take a lead, you can then just like kill them and then equilibrium doesn't matter as much, things like that. Um, so equilibrium wise, this is kind of good. But if you think about golden experience, Dyer has been able to get all the golden experience, except for like a couple that got um, denied. But we could have denied even more and kept Equilibrium still in this area, which is still very good. Like even Equilibrium in this area is like perfectly acceptable, but denied more versus stronger Equilibrium in our favor, but less denied. And it may depend on the game what you want, but personally, I think getting more denied. This is also the other risk. If the enemy builds up too many creeps, they could dive you. Doesn't look like it'll happen in this case, but it is something you have to be a little aware of. And this is legend, so it could definitely, I, I do think people at this level are good enough to start thinking about it. You know, lower down, Herald, Guardian. I think a lot of people are just very scared of the tower. They won't dive, um, but I think it could happen here. I think we could probably stop here. Yeah, we're at five minutes. Let's go to another one. Harold Hoodwink position four game. Let's take a look. All right, bouncing right outside their tower. You'll notice how, literally how close they are. This is why the Radiant safe lane makes me uncomfortable. Um, it's very risky to block on the Radiant safe lane unless you know they're also blocking. Um, so one thing your team could consider, we've mentioned in the last couple replays, oh, when it goes under tower, it's gonna push really heavily. So when it balances this closely and you're the off lane, you do want it to push into your side usually. Um, especially in the early waves, it's like fine to do because you know they can't pull at all. Um, so what you can do is you can walk in, aggro these creeps and pull them back. So like you walk in, attack drow, pull these creeps back. And then these guys just walk into tower. And then boom, it's going to push in. So you can do that like right away. And it's something the Radiant needs to be very careful of. Um, for you... Once you know, if you did that, you would know the lane's going to push, and then you just go, like, block a camp, because you know they can't they can't uh, fix the equilibrium if they can't bowl, so you're good on that friend. But it looks like it is kind of staying out here. Oh. Okay, one's under tower, um, but at this point, a lot of the creeps already died and balanced off, so, like, it's not really going to push too much. Like, you see the range creeps kind of end up killing each other off a bit. Oh, we're so close. See, okay. So it's like the tower got one hit in, but that creep was about to die anyway. So like it technically doesn't matter. But what is working out in your favor is that this range creep is still alive. So it is two range creeps. This is in deny range. So the radiant should be killing this like right away. Even if you guys get the partial XP and even if you guys were to get the last hit on it, um, it's good for them to get this killed off right away because it prevents them from pushing. But actually, as long as this thing's alive, and it's healing, it's almost no longer deniable. 
uh, this lane will push. And you guys might even... Damn! Okay, you got the CM kill. This range creep's still alive. So now this is pushing. Look at this. This is pretty much enough to uh, keep up with this wave a bit. You, This dire wave, so this is dire wave 3, probably will kill this. But it would take a while. So if I was the Radiant, and I know this camp is spawned, this is definitely the pull to do. You do either a full pull or a half pull. Both are acceptable here. I, As you know, guys, I, I like the half pull. Um, but if you do the half pull, or I'm sorry, let's say the full pull. You do the full pull, they have to fight here for a bit. So you need this wave to keep up with this wave for a while. Because we just don't want wave 3 to walk under tower. So this is enough creeps that it should be fine. They walk up here. They fight. They they probably meet around here. Let's actually just go. They fight around here. So this is all theoretical because obviously they're not pulling. But if they fight around here, 20 seconds? I don't know. You know, we, we guesstimate how long it could stay here. If the Radiant, um, they don't want to deny these creeps. If the Dire, you can tell they pulled, it actually is a good idea to push in so that this creep wave dies in a tower. But if you're not aware of that and you just let these creeps fight it out, it gives time for this full pull to kill this camp, which maybe you would help if you were the Crystal Maiden in this example. Um, you maybe help kill these creeps off a little faster. It means you'll deny less creeps, but you won't screw up Equilibrium because your creeps will return to lane sooner. And you like keep looking over here to see how long you have left. If these creeps start dying off really quick because Sand King is killing them, you need to like complete this pull really quickly to get the creeps back outside the tower so that you don't push. In this case, doesn't matter at all. We got waves three. <laughs> we got wave one, wave... No, this guy's wave one. Wave one, wave two, wave three range creeps. Uh, which way do you think this is going to go? I'm going to push up here. If you're hoodwink support here, you just need to know. All right. We don't want to fight. We don't want to die. I don't want them to uh, do any pulls. So if you stay over here, keep an eye on like where the Crystal Maiden's running. If she's trying to do anything, that's good. If you see Crystal Maiden start making her way this way, you kind of got to run out as well. Crystal Maiden's not thinking about it, though. Big mistake, I think. I know we're here for the, the hoodwink, but if you're a Crystal Maiden, you should see this wave pushing up a ton. And at this point, let's go back. If you guys, let's pretend you are the Crystal Maiden before the Sand King. Look how far up we are, and look how many creeps we have. It, it actually doesn't matter what kind of pull you do, really. In terms of equilibrium, it'll be okay because of how many creeps are up here and this creep wave this is creep waves one through three killing creep wave four this is your creep wave four which means as long as you can get this killed off your your equilibrium is fine um the issue is that none of these are stacked or anything and it would be hard to completely kill off creep wave four but creep wave four would return to lane before any dire creeps can even push remotely close to the tower. They won't even get the chance. Um, because they're actually all just going to die up here. I don't know. Sand King uh, killing all these creeps. The Equilibrium could have been kept up here for the Radiant for a really long time. Or for the Dire. Uh, but now that he like killed him and let him under tower. This is still okay. Equilibrium's not going to meet like around here. Never mind. <laughs> Um, all right. This is another one of those, like, weird, weird moments. We got creeps on both sides all over the place. I think when this happens, if you're the dire, when it's this extreme, so usually it's, like, over here. Drow's, like, over here, and some creeps are, like, over here. So if you're the dire, I actually think pushing the creeps into the tower... In an equilibrium sense, maybe not the best, but in terms of denying her experience, it's good. Because if she wants the last hits here, she has to stay here. If she wants the last hits under tower, she has to come here. She can't get both. That's pretty good of you. Alright, so this is delaying the next radiant creep wave. And uh, it doesn't matter because there's another creep wave up here. Sand King is a hero that just naturally pushes. So actually, in this lane... What you kind of want, now that he's uh, level 3, oh, it looks like you stayed a little too long. Ah, I'm not even worried about it. Now that uh, he's got enough points in the skills, what he can do is just keep killing creep waves out here. 
and you keep doing hard camp pulls. And you don't have to worry about the balance because as long as your creeps die here, you're good. And if Sand King is killing the creeps here, it doesn't matter if you guys push because your creeps just die under tower, which means the next creep wave balances here, except they won't because Sand King kills them and you do another pull. Obviously, you have to be a little worried if they like kill Sand King, things like that. Um, Haha, <laughs> you know, you're a little greedy. <laughs> it's all good. We got to learn our limits one way or another. Um, so that's kind of what I would... What I always like to do with like Sand King, if possible, it doesn't always work. It's kind of hard against some matchups. Drow CM possibly being one of them. Whoa! Not this time. So for example, now that the equilibrium is meeting here, it's like Sand King shoves this under tower. Dire creeps are under here, so Crystal Maiden and Drow will be here. And then you do this hard camp pull to pull this creep wave. And then it's like, uh-oh, what if this creep wave pushes up too far? Nah, Sand King will just, like, Sandstorm kill them all right here. And then you're good. And then even if your creep wave, whatever you at, I don't know, 10, 11. Let's say it's 11. If this creep wave 11 kills off this hard camp, it's fine. Because they, like, say Sand King kills Radiant creep wave 11, so they have nothing to meet. They kill this hard camp, they walk under tower, they die. And then creep wave 12s meet here. So when you're the off lane, you have, and you can, like, keep it up here, you have much more freedom to just keep pushing it out. Whereas if you're the Radiant and you try to do something like that with the small camp and you're like, oh, it doesn't matter if they, they don't all die. It does because there's a lot of lane for you guys to push up to and it doesn't reset until you get like all the way up here. And it's a lot harder. But for the Dire, you can just keep shoving creeps under here and then denying here. And I think that's where we're going to stop for this one. Next game, we've got a Guardian 5 almost at Crusader, Warlock, Wave 1... <laughs> It doesn't even it doesn't even matter what they what they are. We're here for the lane equilibrium. It doesn't matter what the drafts are. Um I mean, do I need to say anything? Where do you where do you guys think the lane equilibrium is gonna go? They're auto attacking the creeps a little bit. Helping you guys out, but even then, look what we got. We got three creeps going. So, on Warlock, you should be thinking. I may need to do a pull soon. Just kidding a little bit, because they are... They're, like, attacking the creeps. They're helping to balance it out. At a higher level, that won't happen as much. Uh, still, your creeps are going to uh, push up a little bit. So, this is an example where doing a half pull could have been really good at 117. You just drag two of these back creeps over here. They'll fight. They'll die. These two creeps move up. And imagine two creeps come here. Okay, they join now. So imagine you have two creeps fighting here. Uh, ignore these back two. What happens? This is wave three fighting two of the creeps from wave three. Two of the creeps of wave three died back here. Two of the creeps of wave three die here. This wave pushes in. Wave three dies here. Now wave four and wave four, they mate here. So when it's not such an extreme example of pushing where like sometimes it got kind of messy. And this is what should, I hate to say should, but like, Technically, if you're playing, don't. <laughs> you know, like, this is how it's supposed to play. Um, this is a little bit more normal of what should happen, I feel like. Although they are, like, attacking, but, like, if they hadn't been, um, and you're just, like, playing with people who are, like, kind of keeping the lanes balanced a bit, this is why the half pull tends to be a little better than the full pull. But you stacked? Okay. Opening up some options. So even though you didn't do a half pull, it's okay. You've given yourself some options. So, just to clarify then, you could have done the half pull, and I think it would have worked out great. You deny two creeps, keep the elite equilibrium here, but stacking is a great next step, even if you miss the half pull part, because now you can make use of that later. So, let's see what happens. They're attacking, this pushing in. This is okay, because... So, this is wave five. I really should have it. It should be easy. <laughs> wave one is at zero. Wave two is zero, like, 30. Wave three starts at one minute. Um, so anyways, this is uh, wave five. Wave five will die to the tower. Where's our wave five? Wave five is going to die to the stacked camp. So this is pretty good for you. Uh, the downside being that if they were heroes that could dive, then your gyrocopter's at risk, but they're not, so that's fine. The other risk is that they notice, hey, there are no creeps. Where are they? They come over here, they contest, maybe they steal the stacked camp. That can be pretty risky. Um... 
But let's see what happens. Nah, they just stand out here. Cool. So look at that. You just denied off a full creep wave. Equilibrium stayed the same. This is why stacking the camp. Pretty good stuff. You could have actually even stacked it again there. All right, the last creep died. You could stack it one more time. And that's really good because when you stack camps and they kill off your creep wave, one side you are missing a little bit is getting the golden experience for yourself. But ultimately, as long as the camp dies eventually to you, you will get it. Um, so one advantage of like always doing full pulls is like, oh, I killed a one minute creep wave or a one minute small camp. Oh, spawns, get it killed, two minute small camp. Oh, spawn, full pull, three minute pull camp. So even though your equilibrium is probably like totally screwy, um, you've gotten three small camps for yourself. But if you like manage to keep on top of stacking and you're completely denying things, then at some point Gyro walks in and he like flat cans, he goes pew, 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 kills them all. Now you've gotten like the three camps worth of experience. You've gotten all these denies, lots of like good equilibrium. It's like uh, you're getting everything instead of like making trade-offs. If you can like manage to stack consistently and stuff. All right, so we're kind of like reset after that. I would say you could do another full pull if you wanted to because this will kill everything and then Gyro's still fine under the tower. You're a warlock who can heal him and Gyro has a ton of uh, regen still and these guys are not heroes that dive. I'd, I might trade out one of these iron branches for a clarity, by the way. Just so that when you're doing these kind of pulls... Right? This is a perfect time to clarity up and get your XP back. So this is actually fantastic. These guys, like, they have no idea what's happening. They're like, where are the creeps? They're supposed to spawn every 30 seconds. They're letting you get away with it. I, th I think there are some heralds in this game, so maybe these guys don't know what's going on. I mean, they have a Medusa and PA. They definitely don't know what's going on. Look, she's so confused. She's like, I gotta go find creeps. I need creeps. I'm gonna go to the jungle. Oh, you cannot handle these. Oh, no, she's double stack. Hmm. Oh, she tried. This is a really good... This is how you climb out of the trench, guys, as a support. Look at these guys. They have no idea what to do. Bean, level 2. Gyro, level 4. Both the enemies, level 2, level 3. They're, like, so confused. They don't know where all the creeps are. Equilibrium's not even that bad for you. Here, you go pull this camp. You can do a full pull here if you want, because this creep wave will keep this creep wave... Um, distracted long enough for you to kill that small camp and then for it to come back. Oh, actually, Gyro's attacking him, so maybe you can't. Let's see what you did. Oh, you didn't do anything. Well, it's fine. Look at that. Because you didn't pull, still meets here. That's why I think you could have pulled. So, just to clarify, I think you could have pulled and then Gyro um, doesn't deny the way he did or he runs the creeps around in a circle here. Uh, downside being if they like attack him, it could be a little scary. He could try to run it through this way. That's a little risky as well. If he brings it under, then your lane will push a bit. But look at the time. You could just potentially do another stack later. Um, because the camp would die and it would be now respawning. Which means as you're pushing up, you then do a pull on the next wave and kind of like fix it. Okay, I think we can uh, stop here. Last game, this is a mix of Divines and Immortals. All right, so this is a Dark Seer game. He's already put two, two ion shells. This is definitely gonna push in. Um, equilibrium wise, is kind of okay for you because I don't know. Wave one dies. Wave one will die to the tower. Of course, there is like the elements of harass and all that. But right now, for equilibrium, it's kind of okay. You already blocked that one. Cool. Pretend to body block it too. Nice. All right. So Wind Ranger body blocked the small camp. So there are no pulls till two minutes. So once again, lane will be played out normally, um, which should be kind of okay. He'll take some harass, but because Ion Shell keeps pushing the wave in and from what we talked about earlier, it just keeps resetting on this tower. It's kind of okay. And then we'll see what happens at a uh, two minutes. So in fact, we can even speed up a bit. It was hours on and on. Pretending to body block again. I mean, not pretending you are there, but for everyone else, it it makes them not suspect that there's a sentry there. 
And then if he ever forgets to body block or is like he pokes his head out here and there are two heroes with ion shell standing right here. He he would die if he came out here. So then he's like, "Uh oh, you stopped me from body blocking, haha!" -ha. And he stays down here. And then this camp doesn't spawn. And they're like, "Ah oh, shit, there's a sentry." And the reason it's important to body block this camp, because look what look what Darkseer's been doing. He keeps shoving the wave in, and he can keep the waves out here. It, it'll never push in and make him have to choose. So he keeps the waves here, and then Wind Ranger like pulls the creep wave over, and they get some denies. But because this Winter Wyvern is body blocking. <laughs> body blocking this camp then the lane keeps staying here and it's like acceptable for anti-mage of course he's taking a bit of ion shell damage but like it's fine i thought he would take counter spell to like deal with it but i guess not maybe level three and then wind rangers also being smart by blocking these camps um just so that winter wyvern doesn't have too much to do right now what do you know high high level game there's high level play from both sides All right, so now we are pushing, though. He wasn't ion shelling. Um, Three-minute camp should spawn, though. And I feel like we should see... Uh... Actually, ion shells are back out. I think you could do a half pull. Yeah, so I think you do a half pull there. You deny... Potentially deny two creeps. Um, and you know, like, he's always going to keep pushing the wave in anyways with ion shell. Uh, to an extent, so like it doesn't matter if uh, you do end up pushing a little bit, but it will be fine in this case anyways because you're only sending two creeps in. There's this wave and there's this wave, and you know they can't pull. So I think a half pull would have been really good here, even if they come over and intercept it. Um, it's like a potential gain because we deny two creeps, and if they come over, well, I mean they were gonna farm four creeps here with ion shell anyways, so. You know, maybe they get the small camp, but, like, they could get the small camp with or without your pull anyways. So, I'm kind of down for that uh, half pull attempt. And then it also gives you the option, like, it still gives you the option to stack later, which you need to be a little careful against the Darkseer, but, like, still pretty good, I think. Okay, you come over mid to secure the rune because you haven't had much to do bottom. I'm okay with that. <laughs> there hasn't been much to talk about this lane, actually. Oh, now we're getting into some creep cutting shenanigans. Okay, okay. So, he's cutting this wave. Which, at the end of the day, is going to keep equilibrium still the same after all this. Uh-oh, is this courier about to die? Kind of feels like it. Um, courier! No! Oh, he's fine! Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, because he... I don't know, I feel like... Uh, I don't know if he needs to creep cut. I guess it guarantees him some farm so that uh, the anti-mage can't ion shell. I don't have much to say, and I actually, just to emphasize, guy, I, I think it's actually because of the good play from uh, blocking this hard camp. This could have been, like, way messier with the enemy constantly doing pulls and stuff, but this is pretty much guaranteed the anti-mage farm. Let's take out his last hits. I think he could be a little higher, but he could be a lot lower if the enemy was doing a lot of pulls and stuff like that. So, overall, I think this is pretty good. And then I guess we'll just stop here, actually, because, uh, yeah. It's kind of funny. We didn't see a lot of pulls, um, but it's just kind of what happens sometimes. The video is getting kind of long, so we will stop there. Thank you for watching all the way through. I hope this was helpful. I find it useful. Like, even me watching, like, all the way down to Herald, I still find this helpful to be able to see Equilibrium and Predict. And I'm not just saying that because I made the video. I hope you guys find it useful too. Like, this is the kind of stuff that I find helpful to me to improve. So it's, like, what I want to present to you guys. And I hope it's hope it's also uh, helpful. Because if you can see how the lane's going to go, then you know you have a better idea of what to do. And I think watching it in these kind of unlimited time things to, like, really break it down is useful. But if you don't think so, let me know. And we can uh, switch the videos around to more relevant topics, I suppose. All right. Thanks for watching again, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.